Alright you lot, it's that time again. I'm not gonna lie to you, it's time to delve into the depths of the horrors. That is Twitter. Dad, I'm not gonna lie to you, there's some pretty piss poor ones in this. We're back. It's the stupidest tweets of the German Grand Prix. And to be honest with you, right, until I started making this series, I didn't really realise how annoying the whole of Twitter was in the F1 community. It genuinely gets on my tits. Seemingly, not a single race can go by where not every single fan base is blowing up at every single opportunity. Now, for those that have obviously seen the German Grand Prix, you'll know how dramatic that race was. But if we take a step back to qualifying, my goodness gracious me, we're also in for a treat there. A hydraulics issue in qualifying meant that Hamilton couldn't take part fully in Q2 and had to start the Grand Prix in 14th. And naturally, the entire Lewis Hamilton fan base came to the conclusion that he was in fact the most unlucky driver in Formula 1 history. No one say Lewis isn't unlucky again. Hamilton is out of qualifying. See, I'm tired. Congratulations to Vettel because he's winning the championship this year. Lewis has been so unlucky since the first race. Alright, look, listen here. First of all, we've just reached the halfway stage of the season and, spoiler alert, Lewis Hamilton is leading the championship. And even at the point of this statement being made, he was literally nine points, I think, behind in the championship. Seemingly, that can't be overturned in the space of 11 races till the end of the season. Why is everybody so dramatic? If it was the last race of the year, I would literally understand. Other than that, you're actually being a melt. Secondly, he's not been unlucky in every single race since the start of the season. Granted, he has been unlucky at times during this year. But it all balances out. Everyone in their entire life goes through phases of good luck and bad luck. Lewis Hamilton has had plenty of good luck during his career. There's been a couple of strategy mistakes. He broke down, obviously, in Germany in qualifying. He had the incident in Silverstone. He broke down in Austria as well. I get that. But some of the races, he was just nowhere pace-wise, okay? Allow it. It's not a situation like he should have won every single Grand Prix like some people are portraying. We're even forgetting the fact he was literally handed a victory in Baku. Even if we ignore what then went on to happen in the German Grand Prix, which proves he isn't the most unlucky driver in F1 history, he actually was gifted a victory in Baku. If we're gonna talk about unlucky drivers, right, Valtteri Bottas has had more wins taken away from him than Lewis Hamilton has. I don't care what anyone says, I'm very sorry. Someone made a table that he's lost double the points from failures within the team and failures within the car than Lewis Hamilton has so far this season, and that was even before Germany. So let's not even get it twisted, folks, okay? Upon Hamilton's retirement from qualifying, Monza Creative had this to say, he ain't gonna do shit tomorrow, he is out, and he knows that too. Ah, uh, 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 plus why? Good old Gaz also chipped in with his opinion on Hamilton. At some point when you're a youngster and you see your 40-year-old plus dad tweeting, sometimes you've just gotta say, look, Gaz, it's not good for your safety, okay? Just stop. So we fast forward to the race and we're about halfway through. Sebastian Vettel is leading comfortably after a couple of pit stops here and there. He doesn't find himself too far ahead of the charging Valtteri Bottas. The rain starts to come down, Vettel's forced into a mistake and he crashes off from the lead in front of his home crowd. To be quite honest with you, it promoted some serious Yadar activity on social media. Just seeing him slide off and banging his steering wheel, then crying over the radio, that's made my day. I don't care what happens now, this has cemented my opinion of this guy. And what conclusion have you come to, Rich Evo? That he's a passionate man wanting to win his championship and then a mistake like that reduced him to that emotional wreck. I can't begin to imagine the terrible image you must have of this horrendous man. I can almost guarantee if of age, this man voted Brexit because his local boozer got replaced by a Polish supermarket. Too much cry makes the racetrack wet. Sorry Seb, next time do it yourself and stop asking for Ferrari to help you overtake cars. If that's a reference to when Ferrari used team orders to swap Raikkonen and Vettel, then I suppose you can't really compare it to usual overtakes. Seb seemed to have an absolutely fine time of overtaking Lewis Hamilton at Austria, so I don't really know what your point is, lad. And this is the moment he lost the championship to that look. For the uh, Taylor, I swear to I've already covered this, alright? Karma, karma, karma. Karma for what? 
for the fans calling Hammer Crybaby yesterday. Right, brilliant. Okay, so let me let me just break down this analysis of the situation. Sebastian Vettel has received karma because a selective portion of his fan base were happy at Lewis Hamilton breaking down in qualifying. For the sweet love of God, somebody explain the situation to me. Some people were saying it's karma because he won in Britain. Oh, well, I'm sorry. I'm, I'm sorry, Steve from Bristol, that he decided to win outside your backyard. But it's a championship, mate. It happens sometimes. I don't think it's warranting of karma. Now, I mentioned team orders there, that when Ferrari used it to swap Vettel and Raikkonen round logically, given they were on different strategies, everybody wanted Arriva Bernay castrated at the circuit. Suspiciously, though, there didn't seem to be all that much talk about it when Bottas was prevented from clearly overtaking his slower teammate Hamilton so that Hamilton could win the race at the end. Great battle between Bottas and Hamilton there. No team orders down at Mercedes. In fairness to Elliot, he did actually tweet this before the radio call was put out, but I did find it quite ironic that they used team orders about half a minute later. The irony of Lewis relying on team orders to win. Um, what? Were we watching the same race? Yes, we were, Rishka Abrahams, all right? This account gets on my tits. Listen here, Rishka, we know you've got your head so far up Lewis Hamilton's arse, you can see his tonsils, but we just... I'm just... I'm gonna have... To, look, I'm gonna have to calm down. I can't... To be honest, we haven't even got to the most controversial part. That, that was that Lewis Hamilton, according to a lot of people, should have got a penalty for crossing over the grass and lately diverting away at the last minute out of doing a pit stop. He wasn't penalised because he didn't do the pit stop. He went on to win the race. So everyone was like, he's gained an unfair advantage. And I went along with it because it was fun to annoy Lewis Hamilton fans. Most people had gripe at the fact that Kimi Raikkonen had been penalised at Baku for literally the same thing in 2016 whereas Lewis Hamilton had done this in 2018 and was given only a reprimand instead of the five second penalty that Raikkonen got. And at first I went along with that because I saw the FIA reports. However, in fairness, a couple of Hamilton fans brought up a really good point that it's actually track specific is that rule. In my opinion, it shouldn't be, so I still believe that Hamilton got lucky on that count because it shouldn't be a rule. It should just be for every single track. Regardless of that though, he didn't actually break a rule or infringe anything as far as the Hockenheim track is concerned. But that proof and that explanation didn't stop the majority of Twitter. The F1 account put out a tweet about it being a miracle victory for Lewis Hamilton and, well, these were the responses. It's not a miracle when your teammate and the FIA helped you. Not really a miracle when you don't have to worry about any punishment being handed down by the steward so you can do whatever you like. Not really a miracle when there's rain, safety cars, and team orders for your teammate on fresher tyres not to overtake you. Defied the odds, my ass. Most jumped out of his way because he moans like a baby if they dare to race him. His teammate told to let the whinging brat win, then he decides to break the rules anyway, but nobody dare upset the spoiled brat so they let him off. Hardly a miracle. Win. FIA equals Mafia. D I'm sorry, we're going to have to stop you there, Jonas. That doesn't even make sense as an equation. FIA can't equal M A F I A unless M and A are both constants at one. But even then, why would you want an equation for that? It's. Our sport is so rigged. This might well be a slightly okay tweet if it wasn't posted under every single F1 tweet on the day. At Ferrari Lover 5. Well, I'm sure this is gonna be a heartfelt, well thought through, completely unbiased response to the situation. FIAMG. Yeah, yep, yeah, sounds good. Brilliant. Lewis Hamilton should have been black flagged for crossing the pit lane entry. So dangerous. Could have caused a massive accident. Dumb luck that he didn't. F1 stewards need to be unbiased and consistent. Okay, so for a start, Richard Nelson, if you're calling for consistency, that doesn't make sense compared to Raikkonen, because he didn't get black flagged, he got a five second penalty. And second of all, what in the tits are you on about? There was nobody around him, he literally in no way could have caused an accident because he didn't even come back onto the racing line immediately. And another race with more proof that Mercedes has an illegal car. Why? It's completely obvious. Joe, mate, brilliant. If it's completely obvious to you, then I'd like you to 
share it with the rest of the class because, to be honest, I don't see where you're coming from. Um, oh, I'm baffed. I, right, we're done here. I'm sorry, I'm not having any more of this. I'm, I'm gonna, I'm gonna blow out part of my brain if I continue reading any more of these social media posts. But I hope you've enjoyed regardless because, oh, Jesus Christ. Literally every single race is providing some stonking tweets at the moment. It's absolutely brilliant. If you've enjoyed this set, then slap a like on the video and subscribe if you're new around here. And that's about it from me. It's been a pleasure literally ranting at you guys today. Have a great day. Enjoy yourselves. And goodbye. I want you, you want me, I know that Oh shit, fuck all these movies with ten and they're deaf with too much emotion Oh shit, she said love is a poison, so you're sick with caution Oh shit, fuck all these movies with ten and they're deaf with too much emotion I ain't fucking with these love songs, never, never